But do you ever just feel like the government will not get out of your fucking face? Do you ever feel like you just want them to leave you the fuck alone? So, I scanned some stuff into the uh, computer. Uh, current child support obligation will therefore end as of 6-1. I'm not sure why they waited six months after my child was 18, but I no longer uh, am subject to the terms of the support order. Oh, but by the way, if there's any arrears, we're gonna try. To, you're gonna try to continue to collect based on applicable duration of judgment laws. I, that's not even like that's uh, based on the applicable duration of judgment laws I don't even know what that means but you see this night this name right here see that right there that's the caseworker that's the assigned agent that uh, is going to answer some questions so we put in a grandma request to ORS the other day and I had a little two minute video the other day. I'm going to show you uh, how to get to it. And here's the website right here. Okay. You know what? Let's make that a little bigger. Okay. How's that? That's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to show you how to get the contract for Title 4D and where you can locate it. You will go to this state plan slash welcome okay so you're going to HHS yeah, this is the office of child support and then this is the plans so you might want to write that down or stop the video and type it into your browser uh, and this is where you go okay so you type that in right there's the website, Office of Child Support Plans, ACH. That's it. A C H. Okay. Administration for Children and Families, Health and Human Services. Gov. Backslash State Plan. Backslash Public Plan Search HTML. Comes up right here. Okay. So look, let's go back to the system home. This is the uh home page okay state plan data okay go down here to your state click on the drop down box and go to wherever you live click on it put uh whatever and push go and there it is okay and if you hit pdf report this is what you'll get okay let's click it and let's give it a second here it's 66 pages long and it goes through everything okay you can see right here it's downloading <gasps> look at that state of utah and it's got everything located in a single state agency blah 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 so again it's 66 pages long we're not going to read it um but that's how you get to get a copy of the plan okay and there's one thing that stuck out that I wanted to write and it talks it talks about support obligations right here it gives you of the act that's the Social Security Act 456 a of the act and then it has to have a um, enforcing code of federal regulation 45 CFR 302.50 the support rights assigned to the state. Well, what does that mean? Okay, so the support rights that you assign with a contract to the state. Did you assign rights to the con to the state? No. As defined in 301.1, constitute an obligation. Huh. So when she goes to them and signs over her support rights to the state that now constitutes 
you having an obligation owed to the state by the individual responsible for providing such support. So see how they worded that? She's go she goes to the state, signs a piece of paper, an application for services, and now you are now obligated and you owe the state. There it is right there. Okay? How in the fuck is that legal? That can't be legal. Anyway, that's, uh, you know, that's page two. So you can go through, you can read the whole thing, you can go to your state. You know what, let's go back. Hang on, let me pause this for a minute. Okay, you can go back and once again, type that in. And you can get a copy of the Title 4D plan. And you can go to, this will be the page that it comes up. And there's also another one that I wanted to show you. Um, but you just go right here, you push in your state. Some of you guys are in wherever. Let's see, I think we got New Jersey, we got Michigan right there. Okay, there's Nebraska. Where's Ohio? Where's my boy in Ohio? There it is right there. Push the Ohio one, and boom, there it is. Okay, pops right up. And you can read all about it, who's obligated, how they set it up, how they steal your money. Okay? So one of the other things that I found, too, is this National Conference on State Legislators. And this talks about the child support process, administrative versus judicial. And if you pop down right here, so once again, if you go to ncsl.org, okay, type that in. This will pop up, and if you go to the child support process, and you go to the 50 state tables, and click on that, it'll tell you whether it's judicial or administrative, and then it'll tell you why, okay? And then, like my boy in Ohio, Don, um, if you go down here to Ohio, okay, it's judicial, and it's a tribunal, and Don, if you're listening, that's how they get you and get that tribunal and find you guilty before they even have a hearing because they get three old pink-haired fat ladies in there and they say, oh, yeah, he owes you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, he definitely did it. No trial, no due process, no nothing. So you can see most of them use both of them and then they have if action is contested, if action is uncontested, then they do it administratively, right? If it's contested and you say, hey, this is bullshit, then they do it judicially. So find your place, right? They do it both. And uh, more circumstances, less issues are applicable, and less the custodial period does not come cooperate. So if you don't cooperate, then it goes judicial, right? If you just, you know, so it's all in here, okay? You can read all that. So back to this. This is that website. This is my grandma request that I asked for the following copy of the contract and accounting of all money all that stuff okay and then she went through selectively and chose to uh, give me some stuff okay in response to number two an accounting of all money paid to Utah she says well we don't have that that might be you know Department of Health and Human Services so this lady was pretty actually pretty decent okay I have enclosed copies of the Utah Department of Human Services letter of agreement with the administrative office of the courts. Okay, there it is right there. It says they're in contract. The courts and the Department of Human Services, which has ORS underneath them or in them or whatever, uh, they're in contract. Okay, so everybody's got an interest. Uh, doesn't pay money to third district court, really. Because right here, I got a letter of agreement between the office of the courts and ORS. So we'll see, but let's take a look at that. So this is the Department of Human Services letter of agreement. Okay, and this is between Utah State Department of Human Services, the Office of Recovery Services, referred to as ORS, and... AOC, the Office of the Courts, referred to as AOC. 
Where appropriate, AOC is intended to include the state of Utah's district court. Booyah, right? Okay, so everybody's in contract. Okay, how much? $200,000. Okay, so I'm not going to read it all to you because I don't want this to be too long. I got some stuff to do tonight. Um, by the way, I just showed you that I no longer pay child support. Uh, but they're going to try to collect on arrearages, and we've got a bunch of other stuff we want to get into. So there's Lisa Stockdale from the office, and there's the budget manager. So she's getting a bunch of letters. Um, I showed you Alyssa Barlow. She's getting a bunch of letters. And there's also one more, uh, which is uh, Ann Silverberg Williamson, which we showed you earlier. There's Lisa Stockdale, she's the director, and the executive is Ann Silverberg Williamson. So she's getting a bunch of documents, she's getting a bunch of documents, and of course, Alyssa. So um, I'm going after them all, okay? I'm going after everybody. So we've already done the conditional acceptance, we've already done the proof of claim, we've already showed them a default, you guys have watched the videos, uh, notice of irre irrevocable estoppel. I've done all that. I've got all the documents. I've got everything that I need to to prove that I sent everything certified mail. They're in default. There's nothing they can do. So now that uh, I've completed my administrative process, I have a couple of options. One of them is to sue them uh, in their commercial um, capacity in their individual capacity try to sue the Office of Recovery Services uh, they're gonna say that they're not a person you know we already tried that with the uh, with the lawsuit and uh, you know that it's it's actually true it's it's not the actual office that does anything it's the people behind the keyboards okay and those are the people I feel that we should be holding responsible get a name Okay, find out who your you know your assigned agent is, and direct all the paperwork to them. And then if they don't show you the contract for services, I would go after them, man. You know, I mean, I know it's three hundred bucks, three hundred fifty bucks to file. You know, I, I know, but these people are not going to give up. Now, there is the commercial lien process that we're looking at right now too. That you know is going to be something else. But because I have not sent Stockdale and Williamson all this paperwork, they are going to get copies of my discovery with leave and the UCC and the default and the non-response and the discovery with the answers and the irrevocable estoppel. They're going to get everything. But this one is going out tomorrow and this is a cease and desist and a conditional acceptance and offer to pay upon proof of claim. Okay, so Alyssa Barlow, you are hereby ordered to cease and desist any and all collection actions until you validate this alleged debt with a notarized affidavit of response, which is one of those things that they will never do, man. Okay, you'll notice all that paperwork. They'll sign something to get some money, but they won't sign anything when they're sending you something in the mail, right? You saw all those documents. They'll sign something with the federal government to get you know, federal funding and, and grant block block grants and all that, but they won't sign anything, okay, because then they know they're commercially liable. So I'm sending her a letter, and Stockdale and Williamson are also going to get a letter. Uh, I'm not going to read this to you, um, all of it. You hereby a receipt under Fair Debt Collection Practices Act regarding your above-referenced alleged case number and presented with a conditional acceptance and offer to pay upon proof of claim. Do not ignore this notice. Several other notices were sent, all by certified mail. That is true. That is a fact. And ORS and its agents have created an irrevocable estoppel, which means that's it. You can't turn, you know, can't go back regarding your enforcement and collection activities. ORS and all agents have exhausted your time allowances to respond, and you are in default. However, in an effort to settle this matter in the most efficient, honorable manner, remember you want to stay in honor, I once again 
conditionally accept your offer for alleged payments and make an offer to pay in the above name matter upon your complete and total fulfillment of the following conditions. And I've got a bunch of them here, okay? I want the contract, I want you to put it in writing, I want you to show me, all that stuff, okay? But we're not gonna read it all to you. I am speaking directly to you, Alyssa, and you, Anne, and you, Lisa. You will notice that your name is not capitalized. Contacting me again without first properly documenting that I have any obligation to you or your agency pertaining to the above referenced account number after verifiable receipt of this notice of conditional acceptance, right, which is your certified mail, will establish and constitute that you deliberately intend to use interstate communications, the mail, in a scheme of fraud by using further threats, intimidation, deception, enticement to coerce me into committing some act creating a legal obligation, which there is none, okay? There's no contract, so I am not legally obligated to you and or disability where none exists previously or presently, as well as constituting that you and your firm knew or should have known that by such communication, what you have heretofore attempted to do was and is false and therefore unlawful. Okay? You have 14 days from the receipt of this conditional acceptance to respond on a point-by-point -point basis, sworn affidavit under your full commercial liability, signing under penalty of perjury, that the facts contained therein are true, correct, and complete, and not misleading in, a ma in any manner whatsoever. Statements and declarations, okay? That's your statement you get from the bank every month or whatever. A statement is not a true bill. And a declaration, I declare. No, 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 no. No, I will be affidavit of truth. That's what I want. Sign under penalty of perjury. Okay, statements and declarations are insufficient response as declarations permit lying by omission, which no honorable draft may contain. Your failure to accept my conditional offer of settlement by producing each and every requested answer, record, and or documentation will be seen as more dishonor and default. Or in the alternative, Send me written withdrawal and closure of this alleged claim. Close, set off, or discharge the case number, constituting your stipulation that I have no duty or obligation to any portion of the above aforementioned debt whatsoever, and that you have no right or basis to prefer, pursue any further collection. Right? Pretty good. Be advised that notice to any agent in your firm or under your employ regarding this conditional offer of acceptance is considered notice to any and all principles, right? So whether Alyssa gets it, Ann gets it, or the fucking busboy, or the mailroom, or the maintenance engineer, doesn't matter. Whoever gets it, ORS got it. Right, as well as any act, uh, let's see, where am I, where am I? any and all principal free fail to reply and completely respond on a point by point basis, as well as any activity by you or your firm to secure payment with a judgment, a lien, or a garnishment before responding to this conditional acceptance shall deem as an agreement with the facts as stated in my attached affidavit. Okay, and we're going to go into that in a second. Okay shall further deem an automatic dishonor of this conditional acceptance in your agreement and you will immediately pay me $75,000 for compensation. Okay? Signed without the United States. You don't want to be in the United States because then you're what? You're a U.S. citizen and you got a social security number and you're a fucking slave. Okay? So, they're getting a copy. It's all going there. So I'm going to run through this really quick. This is my affidavit of truth, okay, in, in support of my conditional acceptance letter, okay. It's competent to state the matters, 
Fine is not in possession of documentation that proves ORS and Alyssa claim that they have authority to enforce a collection for child support and income withholding order or a lien against me. Okay, so I'm not saying that you can't do it. I'm saying that I'm not in possession of documentation that proves ORS. Okay, that proves that ORS is the creditor. That proves that ORS is the creditor with respect to me. Okay. That they have a registered commercial claim against me. That the affine is a party to a security agreement. Okay. Security agreement. What's that? Everybody say it together. The contract. Okay. I have no obligation that has been validated and verified. I don't have, I'm not in possession of any documentation that you validated and verified this debt. Okay. That I'm liable. Okay. Allows for the collection of debt through an income withholding order. I don't have any paperwork that says I, I you know, agree to that. Okay. That proves is authorized by statute and enforcing regulation. See, that's another thing that we'll learn later on, guys, is every statute and code has to have an enforcing federal regulation. Okay. That's why IRS is not positive law because the enforcing regulations that they try to use are under DEA and, uh, you know, um, I think it's under like alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. It's just ridiculous. These people are such fucking crooks. So, um, let's see. I don't have a proof of a signature and status that you are the holder in due course. Who's the holder in due course of this account, you guys? That would be me. I'm the secured party, right? I'm the creditor, okay? I don't have anything, I don't have any documents that say that you guys are not acting like a collection agency. And if you are, where's your business license and where's your authority to collect, um, you know, to be a, a debt collector in Utah? So anyway, it all goes through there. We're going to get this all signed by the notary and uh, good times. So I hope that helped you guys. I would get the plan and then I would try to get these people. Anyway, we're at 22 minutes. I'm going to cut it. Just go to this, okay? Go to the state plan system home, okay? Get a copy of the plan. And like I said, okay, just pick something out wherever you live, New Jersey, Iowa, Ohio, whatever, okay? And the, the, the good thing about all this stuff is it has all of the Social Security Act numbers right next to it. So you can cross-reference and you can go there and see all this right here? 454 of the Social Security Act, okay? 45 CFR 30212. It's the Bureau of Collections for Iowa, right? And then they just check the boxes and they fill it out and they just state administered, right? Let's see if it says the same thing in Iowa as it does me. The support rights, up oh, there it is right there. Responsible for providing such support. Complies with the requirements of CFR through. Alright, so anyway, I hope that guy I hope that helped you guys. Peace.